Some of you might remember, as I immediately did, uh, in terms of the exact law and classification materials, as to one very interesting part of that. Now, there was a very viral tweet uh, that went up yesterday. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen from Mark Elias. He's a longtime Russiagate-connected figure, and he was fanning a lot of resistance hope. Let's put his tweet up there, please. What he points to is that in 18 U.S. Code 2071, in the concealment, removal, or mutilation generally of classified materials, there is a clause, part B, that says any person who is convicted of doing so shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. So this was taken as fact that this would, if he was convicted, actually bar President Trump from ever holding office again. However, we actually all went through this already during the Hillary uh, during the Hillary episode of her use of a classified material server in her basement. And what we found, and let's go ahead and throw this up there, is that you cannot actually impose qualifications on holding the presidency by statute. That the Supreme Court has ruled that the qualifications for the presidency of the United States are set only and only in the Constitution. That the search for one weird trick, as my friend Jason puts it, <laughs> to banish Trump from politics will simply have to continue. And I think he's right there. I mean, I guess the only part of the one weird trick would be if he's literally sitting in a federal penitentiary. So I guess you can't run for office then. Although I, I actually don't even know if that Didn't, one is true. I, I actually think you yeah. can. Didn't Jim Trafficant? <sighs> oh my gosh. Didn't what look, a throwback look it up. Here. I think he like, ran for yeah. Congress from a prison cell, right. I think. So I don't actually think even that well, technically there you go, bars. Right. I'm sure it makes it very, was I right? Did well, I here, it? so in, he was certified to run for the same seat and so that his platform to repeal the 16th Amendment of the Constitution, he actually ended up losing that race. Let's see. No, he was released from prison on September 2009. Okay. So I think at the time of the election that he was not but technically he was sitting in the federal penitentiary. while in prison. Right, but he did <laughs> enter prison in 2002. So, so wow, when he filed fun for office, he was in prison. I, I, yeah, Sounds I mean, like anyway. I, I don't want to speak definitively because I genuinely don't know. But yeah. that is a fascinating. I mean, I'm sure. I, I think it would about. be. I think it would be a barrier. I think it would make things very difficult. Yes. To run from for office sitting in a federal jail cell, but um, you know, I, I I'm wow. not sure that it technically rules you out from office. Again, these are wild times to be contemplating any of this. And even though what we know of this investigation is focused on the Federal Records Act, the, the fact remains that the president is under investigation in multiple jurisdictions across the country, any one of which could uh, turn up an indictment. Actually, Eric Holder, who again, you know, I think it's interesting to hear what he thinks about it, not only because he used to be attorney general, but because he's presumably well-connected in the DOJ and in the legal community, said he actually thinks the most advanced investigation is the one that's going on in Georgia mm. regarding the fake elector right, scheme, right. more so than uh, the, the grand juries that are right here in D.C., now, I would also expect that we're going to enter a relatively quiet period now that we are into, you know, very close to the midterm elections. So it's probable that we have this, you know, major, major event right now, and then we don't hear much of anything until after the elections are finished and we're, you know, beyond beyond the midterms. But that's just speculation based on historical precedent and what the Justice Department has done in the past. You know, it is interesting, the parallels with the Hillary thing, and it kind of cuts both ways because, um, you know, you had certainly at the time Republicans felt that the handling of classified material was ex very vital, oh extremely gosh, important, sure. worthy of investigation, yeah. worthy of potentially hashtag locker upping. Um, now it's, you know, it's no big deal. And like, this is an overreach and who really cares about classified I'm information, not sure et cetera, I can et cetera. Bear a relitigation <laughs> All of that, having lived through some of it and having have, having participated here we are, in much here we of are. it itself. But I, yeah, um, I mean, we all learned. I, I knew used to know the details of like there was like this seaman who had also been convicted. Yes, I was thinking about this, this, this morning yeah. too. And, and he was like, on. They yeah, talked about it on Fox on, News correct. relentlessly yeah. about how it's unfair. They went after right. him. I remember him, every every detail of the guy's case. All of this stuff. Um, I do want to say on the the law there and about yeah. that one piece about, you know, then you can't hold public office again. I mean, it's possible that this would be subject to litigation. I'm no lawyer, mm. but uh, I, it seems to me that the reading of the 
parameters for who can run for president laid out in the Constitution, it seems to me that that reading is probably correct. Yep. Um, I also want to say, though, it wasn't just resistance libs that I saw sharing this. Mm. I also saw right-wingers sharing this as a way to say, like, oh, do you get, like, uh, this is the game, this is where they're heading, this uh. is really their goal. So I just think it's important to, you know, to have the, the information out there about what exactly that statute means and how far-reaching it ultimately is. So um, a lot that we don't know at this point, but the one thing we can say for certain is this, we've never been in this place in history where you have a former president, residents being searched, um, according to him, safe being searched, um, served a warrant under investigation in multiple jurisdictions. And I think anyone who is hazarding a guess as to where this is going and how it plays out and how Trump will react mm -hmm. is, you know, way out over their skis. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.